So we are now here at the world famous Jay Black's crib. He graciously invited me and my lovely camel woman right here over so we could see this beautiful piece of gear right here. Okay, good, good step back a little faster. All right. But, okay. But now he's gonna go ahead and show us a few. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna go over a few things and he's gonna go ahead and show us the new push three and hopefully we can kind of get a beat out of him. And uh, he's already went through a lot with it. He was on a Abe show the other day and uh, they did a great job with that. But I wanted to come see it yeah. myself and see if it's worth me spinning the, the lint that's falling out of my pocket. Hey. You know what I'm saying? So he's going to go through it and kind of show us a few things on it. And uh, I might want to see if I can get my hands dirty a little bit too. <laughs> so brother J Black, what we got, man? All right, so what we got here? We got that. Uh... What we got here? So let me ask you this though, a reverse question. And we'll do it. What do you, when you look at this, what do you, what do you think? Um, It's different. Okay. And uh, it looks confusing. Okay. It looks confusing. Yeah, that's fair. Cause I, Cause I've seen people work on it, but it just looks confusing. That's fair. Well, do you think, do you think it's confusing because it doesn't have a touch screen or is it because everything is not base? What do you think? Because these are good, these are good things that a lot of people have said that too. Well, it's just all the on. buttons. So I yeah. guess this is a, I guess this is like a key range or whatever. So like that was C, that would be like C sharp and then D. Right, right. Sharp. Okay. So that's how that works. Right. right. Okay. This right here, if you look at it, this is your base screen. And, um, are you familiar with Ableton? Now? So this is your first experience, but that's cool though. If this is your first experience, you never even touched Ableton on the software. Well, I've, I've touched it, but I've touched like the light versions, uh -huh. but I just never really got into it. But I have used Ableton, I think about two or three times. Okay, Try. okay. I feel like going standalone route is probably the best way to do it because now you're locked into this. When I had to push two, I found myself using the computer software a lot because, um, I found it just easier that, and I've been using the what all the way back from Ableton 8 or Ableton 9. And when I had that, I didn't have a push. I was just using the computer. So when I finally got the push, I think it was like two years ago or a year ago, um, I kind of found like it was just like I, I was slowing up the workflow because I was trying to figure out how I can emulate and kind of move faster in the computer, right? Yeah. So with this, the standalone, it forces me now to use it. It takes it from a controller now it's a complete instrument. And a very powerful instrument. And I always want to make videos on it, but I'm almost a little embarrassed because a lot of people are going to say, yo, you can do that on a push too. Well, I just didn't really use a push too like that, so I wouldn't know. So I always just give it up to this machine to bring in a new uh, user base because now this is a whole bunch of users who always want to jump into the push too and probably have jumped into the push too. But they just couldn't get into the workflow because they found that the workflow on a computer is a lot easier. Now that's where I was getting at because yeah. there's a lot of people who do use, you know, Ableton, yeah. like to start their melodies and everything, but then they use their drums in something different. Well, there's a reason why. I you will know, say that. Maybe I, something like, you know. I will say that. So right there. So know, that. right there. Uh, see, ah, see. You know, ah. All right. So one thing I actually learned today, shout out to DCAP. I learned that so we have these guys right here, which is the, uh, we have the ADAT. So just to even clarify, just off the jump for all the people who are going to talk about the converters, you can hook an ADAT up there and now go, you can bypass the converters that are built into the actual machine and you can get your own, you know, RME type of converter. Yeah, that's what a lot of people are saying the RME converters can hook up directly. You can hook directly into it. So now it's like, what are we even talking about, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now you got that sound. So I feel like that eliminates that and they really don't need to go into heavy depth with uh, going sound great. But you also got to remember too, a lot of people who have Ableton, they know about their, their plugin. So if you have the suite, like I do, you get all of Ableton's plugins and their plugins are A1. The, the, you, got, you got the EQ8, um, you have the tuner, you have so many good things that already on here that you really don't need the third party plugins. I feel like maybe third party plugins might come in the future, but just not right now. So getting back to it, it, it does look intimidating because there's a lot of buttons, but it's very simple. So you got your two MIDI tracks and your two audio tracks. Hopefully they'll let you do favorites one day, but this is what they start you off with. And this is how you basically get to 
control them. Now, if you want to add another track, you just press this plus button and it's going to allow you to add another MIDI track, another audio track or return track, a device, or just how you get to your audio effects and all that cool stuff like that. But, so everything's pretty much on the dial. It's right there in front of your face. Yeah. And that's why I kind of love that coming from what we're used to, we're used to that dial. That yeah. dial is everything. Um, but no touch screen. No touch screen. No touch screen. 2023, on 20, no touch screen. Okay. Yeah, see, I, see, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> but all right. So let's just talk about it though. Real quick sidebar. And okay. This, right, you have to appreciate the NPC. And this is why I didn't want to jump into the whole debacle, right? Even though the NPC is not focusing on the sound converters, the NPC did a big thing by taking a big dive into making a whole new change of equipment, right? right. So the Roland, uh, the, the, the SP404, right? Yeah. It looked like this forever, right? Yeah. And this is the newest one. They added more buttons to it, but they kept the work full of the same. There's no touch screen to it. There's no, there's nothing really extra to it. It doesn't have Wi-Fi. It doesn't have all these, you know, self updating things. And why? Because people who had this before, they dialed into that workflow. Right. Um, same thing with the machine, the plus, a lot of people were like, Hey, the plus doesn't have a touch screen. Well, a lot of people who had the MK1, MK2, MK3, they got into that workflow yeah. now, so I, heavy. I, I, can't, I can't lie. Once I got into the workflow of the machine, I kind of see why they I have still a touch can't screen. get to that workflow of that machine, what? though. I'll be honest with you. Man, I'm I'm fine with it. It's but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm helping them out for that one. <laughs> but you know, uh, you know, the OP1, uh, even the Nord, they just came out with the Nord 4. It looks exactly the same as that. MPC is really the only one that actually came out with a whole new device, right? Because we're coming from the 2500. I got my 2500 in there. Back in 2017, that's when the MPC Live first released. I will tell you, it took me about, about almost a good year to make that switch because I developed such a fast workflow mm -hmm. just with the knobs and just with, man, we had that green Nokia screen back yeah. in the days, right? But we was doing everything with it. So surprisingly, when the workflow of the live came, I was like, this is cool, but it's a lot. Everything is hidden in menus. Everything is this. And now it's just changing this, right? But as the MPC got better and regressed, it kind of gave us this whole new workflow of, well, damn, this is actually pretty dope. So I feel like where we kind of get carried away as producers, we're looking for these humongous upgrades out of these other manufacturers that Akai didn't do. So that's one thing we do got to shout out Akai for is doing these things like coming out with the MPC one, coming out with a MPC live. There's nothing in the uh, MPC history that look like those things. Um, and that's, what's really cool seeing the progression of it and that we're going to get, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but getting back to this, yes, there is no touch screen, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, with the not being touchscreen, I but know a lot. Does, of it. it it does illuminate real nice. It's beautiful. Look at that. They have a patent screen. I think only them and BMW have it. So it's it's some it's some it's some technology in that screen, especially when you can. One thing I will say that's really cool is we've been wanting to see our EQ. So when we're you know I'm going to yeah. show you that you can actually see your EQs and edit that you know and actually see that see that file. So it's it's, it's a nice visualization uh, visualization. So. One thing, file transfer. Yeah. So, no SD card, no. Yeah. So you just. So well, yeah. So basically, what I do is I go right here. But what it does is you connect it right to your 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 home internet, the same internet that you got your computer hooked up to. And what's gonna happen is now on the side, and if you're familiar with the push, this right here is your places tab. So this is where you access all your kits when you put all your kits and stuff like that. So that's the places tab, right? Yeah, now? this is your places tab. So this is where I keep all your kits. And I'm sure FL kind of has something similar. You know, like yeah. FL does. It looks similar like that. This mm -hmm. is where you have all your kits. This is my push. Okay. And now this Once is everything just, inside my push right there. So what I can do is if I see something, you can just pull it right on in. There. I can just pull it right on in there. Damn, that shit just crashed on me. <laughs> <laughs> the beta. The beta. It's all good. It's but, the beta, but baby. Once you, but pretty much, once you put it in that folder, once you put it in the folder, it, it drags in there. So you'll be able to automatically. So, so let's just say I just drag something in there. What I'll be able to do is hit this uh, tab right here. So this right here is meaning that you're adding to whatever device you have selected right here. You have eight. You can select for you know you can see you can add more than that, but you can you know visibly see the eight right there. But let's just say I want to use this MIDI track. I want to put someone on there. 
Okay. So you just hit that button. I can either go to my collections, which is going to be my stuff. Now you have your sound, your drums, your drum rack. What's really cool is they have so many different sounds uh, that already are pre-made that sound pretty good. I mean, 64, you haven't touched and these are kits. These are full kits. Just like, you know, you would have expansions, right? Yeah. But let's go back to my sounds. Let's go to favorites. Let's go to, there we go. Sound come. So these are a lot of my favorite stuff. Let's get to a sample. I really want to show you that time stretch. Now, I mean, that's what we really here for, right? All right. So if I like that, go ahead and select that there. So let's just say that's what I just dragged. I just dragged that sample over there. That's where I would go. That's yeah. where I would find it. It just continues. Whatever you name that folder, you're going to see it in your places like that. So once again, when you go back to that, going back to the main screen, and let me let me show you what this is at right here. This right here is going to be your main and your menu kind of like on your NPC. But what's really kind of cool about this is this gives you your four main things. So this is going to show you your simpler or anything that you have going on with your track. Kind of like your program edit. Yeah. All right. Your levels. Okay. All right. You double tap that. Then you get to your, your actual mix um, to each one. This is how you add reverb to actual each track and all that stuff like that. This right here is when I have a clip. The blocks. I don't know why I can't think of the name. Not the arranger view, but... Grid mode. Okay. Grid mode. There it is. Grid mode. I don't know. I couldn't think of the name. And this is going to be your clip view, the okay. famous Ableton clip view. So you just remember these right here. These are kind of your main menus, and th this will always get you there. So if you're in the screen, you just press this, and it's going to get you back to your main. So right here, you see that WAV file. And this is that sample that we just imported in. So when you do that, it gives you just the, the simpler. And this right here is it's real cool. You see your modes. You got classic. Your one shot. If I hit one shot, it's just gonna play. Yeah. All right. Obviously, and then you got the slicing, right? See how so fast how does it, it to check like the transients and everything in there. So right here, it has the transients. You can select it by beat, region, or just manually do it. So will it kind of detect? Yeah. The tempo of the sample and everything. Yep. So all right. Hold on. Yeah. Like that. Like that whole sample. So yep. So what I can do is right. What you're gonna do is. Um, we can do, we, we can leave it on transients, but I also want to lower down the sensitivity to, and the sensitivity is like pretty much how many pads, how many chops. Okay. Um, it's really cool having 64, so we can, we can keep it at, we can keep it at 64 because we don't know which, which you'll get at. It's a lot faster, right? But what you'll do is you'll hit the simpler button. It's going to bring you to another menu, kind of just like your program edit screen. Okay. Just like everything is right there at the bottom. You see your envelopes, your warp just like what we're familiar with. So you'll go here to warp, or I just warp to warp at 16. And now uh, it just took all those, and now it's warping to that BPM. So if I go ahead and press play, and I got that 120 on, so. So they're really short tops. So let's see if we can short. And it's already up. warped. The samples are already yeah. warped. Oh. There we go. There we go. And then. Oh. Slow it down. And no crack no. no pops. And it's, no. it is where it gets crazy. It's how you you have different modes. You have beat mode, tone, texture, pitch, and complex. So complex, complex. Get it where there's no. I can now bring it down. You know what I'm saying? And then you just, yeah. you could just turn that tempo up. Yeah, no you see, and it's, it's, it's moving right with it. It's keeping everything right up. Mm. 
You know what I'm saying? It's just always going to stand beat, whatever you hit. Now, let me ask you this. For a lot of people that do use the MP, yeah. does the pad size really matter to you? Hey, yo. I mean, it's not about the size. It's about the... <laughs> <laughs> What you got to say about this? I mean, you Come made on, a babe. voice. You got to know what you're doing. No. <laughs> you know how to work. All right, so enough about the pad size. All right. <laughs> so let me ask you this. So, okay, okay, we got the sample chopped up, right? Mm -hmm. Now, is it possible for us to have the sample chopped up like you have right here? And we have all these other empty spaces in mm -hmm. here. Can we add anything on that or we have to go to another track? No, so what we can do is, oh, we can convert this. Yes, we can convert this. So I can convert this into a drum rack. Okay. Um, so if I have plans on wanting to add drums directly right next to it or something like that, you can just press this convert button right here. Yeah. And then it's going to convert the oldies, the sample, and I can press drum rack. So, oh, so it's kind of like when you would make like a... Uh, like a processing. Like a processing inside it. Processing, And yeah. then you can add the stuff in. And you can add the stuff, exactly. Okay. Okay. So it still has that, that same type of mode right there. So one thing I love about it, you see how fast the I'm playing along with the metronome, so I can just easily. Oh, I got it backwards. Hold on. And just when you when you mess up, press delete real quick, delete button, and you start it. Play that, turn the metronome off. So I want to see what I just did. I'm going to go right here to my clip. And you see, as soon as I hit that clip, it caught exactly where I stopped. So it's an eight bar loop. So you didn't have to even set it. I didn't have to set it. Right? So I got that going. Now let's just say I was playing a little sloppy. Just hit the quantize button real quick. Go straighten that up. So we got that. So boom, that's there. Remember, so now we're back on our main, we're still in our main menu. Yeah. So now I just hit this track and now I can go here and now I go to my bass. Oh, it's just like that. Just like that. So now I'm gonna, uh, so let me go to my favorite bass line collections. I got the Wonk bass in here. So the ascend button is kind of like uh, the full level. Okay. It's your full level. So okay. now it's cranking, right? So I go here, my sounds, my levels. Each one controls the top. Ooh, now we're getting a little expressive in here, huh? Yeah. So then you got your octave. And then you press scale. Scale is gonna give you all your goodies right there. Like that right now. now, does it have input quantize on here? Oh, yeah, you can do that. You okay, can do that. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely do that. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that, though. I know you don't. I know. It's like, don't glad. correct me while I'm in the process. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I know it's off. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to fix it later. But yeah, no, nah, it can do that though. Well, let's go to the drums here. So we'll go to a MIDI track. Yeah. Go to the drums. And the drum rack is how you customize your drum. So you click the drum rack. So now I do my layout. I can have 64 pads. Now these are all 64 pads. Yeah. All right, so now if I want to go ahead and load something in. I just go ahead and oops, select the sound, just this one. Go there, go through and just select. The and just go to just like the just like how we're used to. You know what I'm saying? Got my favorite. So I got that, and it, it, it keeps going there, so on, so forth, right? And yeah. then you can go right here to edit everything in that. So just like your program edit, this yeah. is your kick, um, the gain, transpose.
And if you want to get deeper into it, press it simpler again. That's how you get to the envelopes. I yeah. like how it looks on it. Very detailed. Uh, yeah, it's, it gets the job done. Filter. Turn your filter on. Mm. And, and it's visual. Yeah. Let's go. I like that I can control one track's length. You can do that with the MPC, can you? Yeah, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it the same way even on. With MPC so I can too. have. So on track two, I can have a length of sixty-two. Yeah. But have it link. But have it looping. Yeah, track I know, one I know on, on the machine. You can do it that way. Wait. But I'm saying on the MPC. I don't know. Delete all that shit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I take I take a look into it. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But you see what I just did there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Because like now I have the full baseline. The baseline wasn't jeopardized by this. Yeah. The, jeopard, the, the, the baseline, baseline still here on the eight bar. Yeah, because that's that's the power of using stuff in clip mode. You know what I'm saying? Like clips. So I they see. might have it on the NPC if you put it in clip mode. But I know I on the machine, like if I do two bars on it and I can have, have them to repeat. And I can go ahead and add like an eight bar drum loop on there or something, and it'll still repeat those two bars. Still, okay, okay. Yeah. It's so clip mode. Okay. So we still got, we still got it. I feel like I'm cheating here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to like it. I'm like, we can still do that, right? Yeah, we can still do it. We can yeah, still yeah. do that. Yeah, if we wanted to. So building your kit, and they're gonna be updating this. Building your kit takes a little long, but just because when you select a new sound, unfortunately, it moves to a different whole thing and it makes you kind of reset it yeah but they are going to fix that in okay. the update but i think it's also because they want you to use their drums yeah because they have so many drums i mean their kits go crazy yeah, yeah and we're just in the c's <laughs> and it goes all the way to z it goes all the way to z yeah. a lot of a lot of i would say a lot of acoustic kits so if you're looking for a real acoustic sound you're gonna be able to find a lot of acoustic techno type of stuff. But okay. it gets the Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how do you think the sound sounds? Kinda of sounds like the machine, right? Yeah, it's got like a machine sound too. Yeah. Like very in yeah. your face, you know. Like that's yeah. very Yeah, that's yeah, that's the answer. He said we like yeah. that. <laughs> we like that. But I like how that sounds too. I like how that sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. NPC has that. Ugh, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, here's another little cool feature was. Yeah. So we say like, you know, we got a little I might I might actually like really use this as a little sample. It's a nice little sample. Yeah. I really made that was a real on the spot. So as a workflow, look at that. Boom, save. And what okay. it does is it's called introverted running slow. So it has this random name generator. What? It dates it and, and names it for you. You see Hold that? On, so it just, you it save just, it. I just press save for the first time. And it, and it gave it a name. So you go right name. here to your folders and that's what that song is called. So anytime I press that, that's why I can get to it. So it's so easy just to get to track. So I can just go to another track. Like it's just very. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. We're gonna start a new one. So all you do is boom, new set. That's just boom, just reset like that. Then you're gonna boom. Let's go to collections. And just go pick a random sample. So these are my folder full of samples. Just point the ones. Pick a random. Boy. What's that? Genuine? Or which one? Yeah, that last. The last one. I wrote here. This one. All right. As soon as I said, when you load that in, just go to your, your, like I said, this is like your program edit. So first it brings you to the, kind of different pitches. So if, even if I, say if this is a sample I don't want to chop up, I can just easily just go back to the sampler here yeah. and now warp it or uh, yeah, warp to 16. So. So yeah, you just need to make sure. Uh, there we go. 
There we go. How's this? It's, it's, it's transient. Okay, so it's transient. The user error. There we go. I was like, yo, how's this not like on the one? Usually because it catches on the. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's crazy. That's wild, right? <laughs> like, that's stupid, right? Like, we weren't, we were just manually just getting knobs so we can get on the one. That's, that, in my line of chopping, <laughs> we ain't <laughs> never had no shit like that. <laughs> Sometimes you crazy. Let me see. Undo that quantize. <laughs> Everyone call me. <laughs> Sometimes I'd be hating to love it. I'd be like, ah, oh, wow. I'm too much fun. <laughs> this right here, man. You like, seen it? I I see it. And you can just keep doing that, bro. You can just just like that. Just boom. Go back to boom. Love up another sample. And that's what makes this thing fun. It's, it's just being able to... Now, th now this is the question I want to ask you. I know it's dope. Okay. I know it's dope. Okay. But where do you see this in three to five years? Man, see, that's, that's a good question. Hopefully in three to five years, hopefully they're making a new one. But I think that it's still going to be in people's studios. This is going to be a lot for the people who... There's a lot of people who surprisingly don't like the MPC. Yeah, you're right. You're right. There's a lot of people who feel like it's kind of limited in certain type of ways. Um, I will say the MPC is still by far. Is it still top? Still, you know, one of the strong, with the, as far as workflow, as far as, you know what I mean? But the stuff that this can do, this is by itself, this is instrument. Like now, I mean, this is, I love Serato Sample. Yeah. But this actually beats Serato Sample, so now I don't need Serato Sample. Okay. You know, let me tell you where this might be my favorite machine. So you see right here, this is that main menu. Now, if I can, and I'm sure if Ableton, if y'all are listening, if we can do a preset where I can have like right here, this is my drum rack, but these are my favorite drums. Yeah. Got my 64, you know what I'm saying? Split 16. I got my, 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 my boom bap drums here, trap drums here, you know, uh, the percussion drums, whatever it is. I got all of them right there. And then on this track, I already got my bass. Yeah. And then I got this track available for whenever I had the sample. And then I got the, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's going to be a beast because I don't know a machine that's doing that right now. Because right now with the with the MPC, I know you got user templates, but I do build out a lot of my stuff each yeah. time. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. When I built the beat each time, because, you know, sometimes I might not really want that preset, but if I can have, if I'm, if I'm at 16 pads each right here in front of me of the, the top drums that I use, and 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 have my my baseline that I use, and I can just add a sample. It's all about workflow for me. And if you can get that going, then you might have something. I'm gonna ask hit up Decap about the ADAT converters. <laughs> Try to get that going on this, so I can see what that see what that sound sounds like. And uh, overall, it's a, it's a powerful machine. Is it worth the two thousand? I think it is. Just for the ability, you're gonna be able to hook it up later, make a bigger processor, bigger battery, whatever you want to do. So should I order it? Do you want it? That's, I love my woman. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll go ahead and get it. This is not replacing the NPC. It's okay. not replacing, that's what you're getting, that's what I'm saying. We're not going in it to replace the NPC. Okay. You know what I'm saying? The NPC, you still here? What that's doing Ooh. right there, that don't, that, that don't, hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that ain't going nowhere. So, we got the first look at it, straight from the man himself. And uh, I'm gonna cut the camera off so I can see if I can do something with it. All right. <laughs> Hit the mute tracks. This is dope, man. This is dope. And then, if I want to add something, I just hit the plus, hit button, the plus, plus button. Make another mini track. All right. 
pick that sound. So, oh, so then I hit. What are you trying to do? Go on, go on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Banana. So now I just hit? Yeah. trying to you know i'm just trying to do my thing on here you know what i'm saying kind of operating over there man <laughs> you know i'm just trying to just do what i could do you know what i'm saying let me well, see. first time ableton user that's crazy let me see here let's let's see here uh so say friends i like that just hit record yep. Beat on it. It was, you know, first beat. You know, you know, maybe more to come. We How don't know. The workflow. The workflow is actually cool. Like I actually, I actually, I dig it. It's a, it's a little bit of a difference, but I know in like two or three days out. You were, you were spinning on it right now. Yeah. yeah. I just gotta know like just the little controls once I do that. Oh, so yeah. It was very simple. It was like, how do I just get back to this? That was all it was. It wasn't a. Yeah, but I... I see the clip feature. It's kind of kind of like a, a machine type of a thing where you, sometimes you have to shorten it up or whatever. But you know, I saw, I saw you got in the groove with that. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, my, it's just my first time, my first time. You know right. what I'm saying? But this was dope. I ain't gonna lie. This is dope. This is dope. My guy. My guy. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Uh. Thanks to uh, Ableton for you know letting him try this out so I can try it out. Yeah. I wish I could have got my own. But, you know, it is what it is, you know. I drove a long way to get here, and uh, I think it was definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. But it's dope, man. It's dope. I, I do like it. I like it a lot. So, I got to try it out, and uh, I ain't really got that much to say. You know, it's pretty dope. Yeah, it's dope. 